Welcome to our daily devotionals. I'm Pastor Dave Schub at Trinity Lutheran Church in West Bend. I'm always uh, thankful for the opportunity to be with you for a little time each day. Today I want to spend some time reading from Paul's letter uh, to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 3, verses 18 through 23. Paul writes there, Do not deceive yourselves. If you think that you are wise in this age, you should become fools, so that you may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He catches the wise in their craftiness, and again the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are futile. So let no one boast about human leaders, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or the present or the future, all belong to you, and you belong to Christ, and Christ belongs to God. There's been a phenomenon, I guess, as we get ready to make this transition between being stay at home and moving on to some wider social interaction that's bothered me a lot recently. People are disagreeing on how this is all supposed to be done. And disagreements are part of life. We have disagreements at my house all the time about various things. But what bothers me is how these disagreements move into demonizing one another, calling each other names, calling people dictators or fools or people who don't care. All these things are harsh in their approach to how to disagree with one another. Paul, in writing to the people at Corinth, was kind of entering into the same sort of situation. The church at Corinth was fighting about all kinds of things, whether you could eat meat sacrificed to idols, how they should do worship together, what spiritual gifts were most important, who was the best church leader, and people were demeaning and demonizing each other as they disagreed out around all these points. But Paul has And Paul does have views on all these things. We can kind of sense what Paul is about as he writes this letter on certain positions on things. But what's most important for Paul to communicate to everyone is, rather than declaring who is right or who is wrong, is that instead everyone is reminded, the believers in Corinth, that they're all children of God. And they should treat each other in that way with respect with care for one another. He talks about things like speak the truth in love. Love being the greatest gift and being aware of the sensitivity of others. Some people have turned this letter into a call for us all to just agree, but that's not what Paul's saying. We all have our own understandings of what God is calling us to, but what binds us together, according to Paul, is not our agreement on how to worship or on what laws we should have or on customs or rules, but we are one because Christ says we are one. We are one because of the love of Jesus Christ. Paul calls us to act out of this reality. And even those who aren't Christians have to realize that we are all in this together. We live on one planet. We are all people who share the same struggles and pain, the same needs, the same hopes and dreams. We can disagree without calling someone else an idiot. We can disagree without undercutting the integrity and good intentions of another person. We can disagree and each act out of our own conviction without demonizing one another. And we can, on the, we can call on those who lead us to do the same thing. I had hoped this time of facing COVID-19 together would lead us into an unprecedented time of civility and even cooperation. And yes, that has happened to a certain extent. But in other ways, it's the same old game. But we don't need to act that way. We can continue to be examples of listening to one another. And while being true to ourselves, respecting those who may see the world in a different light, and even welcoming the diversity of views around us, because we are bound together in Christ's love. I think this will be especially important as we approach the time when physical distancing starts to be relaxed. 
I have a piece that was written in Our Daily Bread from October 14th, or October 4th, 1992. It says, during World War II, Hitler commanded all religious groups to unite so that he could control them. Among the Brethren Assemblies, half complied and half refused. Those who went along with the order had a much easier time. Those who did not faced harsh persecution. In almost every family of those who resisted, someone died in a concentration camp. When the war was over, feelings of bitterness ran deep between the groups, and there was much tension. Finally, they decided that the situation had to be healed. Leaders from each group met at a quiet retreat. For several days, each person spent time in prayer examining his own heart in the light of Christ's commands, and then they came together. Francis Schaeffer, who told of the incident, asked a friend who was there, What did you do then? We were just one, he replied, as they confessed their hostility and bitterness to God and yielded to his control. The Holy Spirit created a spirit of unity among them. Love filled their hearts and dissolved their hatreds. When love prevails among believers, especially in times of strong disagreement, it presents to the world an indisputable mark of a true follower of Jesus Christ. As we prepare to leave our physical distancing, we'll each make decisions on how to act and what to do, and we may not always agree with one another. But how we disagree will show the world what it means to be bound together in the love of Christ. And that, in the end, could make all the difference. Let us pray. Lord, we are all faced with difficult and uncertain decisions in the days ahead. As we each follow our callings, help us to remember that what makes us one is your love, which embraces us all. Amen. I also want to comment on the fact that this morning I saw in Good Morning America a great little piece about a family whose um, whose older grandmother they were taking care of missed going to the store every day, and she had Alzheimer's, and it was difficult. She was used to things being grounded, and this family created their own little grocery store so she could feel like she was going to the store that day. And it reminded me of how much caretakers are having to do in this difficult time as well. And so we keep them in our thoughts and in our prayers, and we offer them our gratitude and thanks for the wonderful job they're doing in the midst of difficult situations. I hope all of you have a wonderful day. I hope all of us, you will continue to join us to like and to subscribe and to be a part of our life together. God bless. Take care.